2016, 2017, this just wasn't something that was very talked about. And so I was feeling somewhat stigmatized for what I was experiencing. I was experiencing a bit of shame around it. And so to have so many other people say and open up and say, hey, I actually experienced this too, like you just did. That is, now I'm getting more used to it, but it was so bizarre and different for me before. I didn't realize that I wasn't as alone as I felt. And so I guess that number isn't something I could have predicted, but I certainly felt like the users who did experience it would resonate with it. Just a lot more users than I thought. Hello and welcome to the Future Psychiatry Podcast, where we explore novel technology and new innovations in mental health. I'm your host, Dr. Bassey, an addiction physician and biomedical engineer. If you are joining for the first time, I would greatly appreciate if you subscribe and share it with your friend network on social media. Additional resources, a full transcript, and group discussion forum can be found on our website, telepsychhealth.com, then click podcast in the top right corner. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the discussion today. So welcome. Today we have Anya Visotska here today. She's the founder of Rooted, which is an extremely popular app with over 2 million downloads geared towards people with anxiety and panic attacks. This is such a cool opportunity to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on the show. Really appreciate it. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So I know you've probably given your spiel before of your background, but I think it's pretty interesting about how you came about with this idea. Maybe for the listeners who haven't heard your previous interviews, tell us a little bit about how you came up with this idea. Certainly, yeah. So I was in my final year of university when I first experienced a panic attack. And at the time, it really felt like it came out of nowhere. I had no idea what was happening. I didn't have a ton of resources to also manage it and navigate it very well. I was on student loans far away from home. I didn't have a family doctor. It was a really confusing time. So I took to my phone to see if there's something there that could help, and there wasn't. There were apps that were very medical in nature, apps that were hypnosis-based, and nothing that really spoke to me and my demographic. So that's the story of why I wanted to create Rooted. That's almost very similar to why I created this podcast. I feel like we all have this experience of there being a need, and I think social media and the internet is being an incredible resource for people. And for clinicians now, I think we need to start to embrace that and start to be in on that conversation. I think that's so cool. You have that opportunity to uh, really change the way that anxiety and panic attacks are treated. So how did you get started with figuring out how to incorporate the scientific data into something that's very usable and attractive to use? I've always really loved to draw and paint. So kind of took that from paper and canvas to the screen digitally. I was teaching myself Photoshop and Illustrator and different tools for designing posters and websites and stuff. So that came naturally in the sense that I kind of knew what I wanted to see and what would have been comfortable for me. So I took that and basically taught myself how to create wireframes. I did go to an agency and ask for a quote for creating an app like this, and it was much out of my budget. So I was like, okay, I got to go back to the basics and kind of start from scratch here. And yeah, so that's really how it started. It was just kind of drawing in my notebooks and then putting it on the screen in a, in a program that helped me create yeah. the wireframes. You've probably looked in the app store about other apps that treat anxiety and you'll see the whole gamut there. You'll see apps that are created by government agencies that are just a, a little bit rough around the edges, but they probably have a lot of scientific valid, validity to them. And so you definitely need to strike a balance. It could be really well validated, but if people don't enjoy using it, then what good is it really? So I think that your creative background really served you well to your advantage. That must be why it's so popular, right? Among other reasons. I think that's a great point. I think the fact that I was coming at it from a lived experience perspective, and I can really resonate with the users because I was the user. I think that has a huge influence on its public reception and you're totally right. Sometimes those other apps, while well-meaning, don't necessarily reach the demographic in the way that they intend to for those reasons. It can be feel a little off or like it's not really speaking to you, whereas I was building Rooted for myself and my demographic. So it came, I guess, more naturally in that sense. I know that you started off working and doing customer service, which I, I admire because I actually did that myself, too, to buy a little scrappy and trying to get the, the company off the ground. What would we have seen when we were using Rooted when it first came out versus now? Like, what, what was the beginning 
like for it? And, and why were those features there first? So the very first feature was the panic attack button. And that's the button that actually provides you with immediate relief during a panic attack. So that was incredibly important to have in the first iteration. I really wanted to see if that would resonate with people, if the design that made sense to me would make sense to other folks. And then also the lessons on understanding anxiety and where anxiety comes from, because it's so important to understand the physiological sensations happening in your body, as that can be part of the really overwhelming piece that really debilitates a lot of people. You hear often of people going to the hospital thinking that they are having a heart attack or that they might be dying. Unfortunately, that's how bad symptoms of panic attacks can get is cause sensations that might make you think that. So it's really important to understand, I think, what's going on in the body and the mind when these things are happening. And so that was the other source. So it was basically the SOS panic attack button and the lessons on understanding panic attacks. Very cool. You know, one thing that I have in common with you is that I used to actually run a lot. And in okay. fact, I ran so much that doctors and physicians say that people who run long distances can have certain heart arrhythmias. And so mm -hmm. I developed a heart arrhythmia when I was 25, 26, called AFib. And it woke me up out of the middle of the night and I thought I was dying. <laughs> I could have used rooted at the time, but I went to the ER and they're like, oh, the, they kind of sh shrugged it off because it was like, it's not an emergency necessarily, even though you feel it's an emergency. So I literally had my first experience with a panic attack from running, which typically was a very healthy trait and mm. blew off a lot of stress for me back in the day throughout my high school and college career. But, you know, it kind of backfired in a way. But in the moment, you're just really frozen and um, you need something safe to turn to. And is that kind of get into the, the name rooted? Is that from being grounded? Totally. Yep. You got it. That's so where you got it from. The okay. idea is get when you look at a huge tree, like an oak tree, let's say, and there's a storm, it's not going to be swaying as much. It's not going to topple over in, you know, unless there's like a huge storm. But basically, <laughs> uh, the idea is to get rooted. It's to have those roots yep. in the ground. It's to not have to be swayed by every event, to be able to handle different situations with more solidity. Your app is incredibly popular. What do you think the reason for that is? And did you expect the certain thing, certain features that are popular when you were incorporating them in the app? Did you think that those would be the thing that makes it popular? I think that to answer the first question, it's a combination of both that lived experience and the language in the app. Something does really resonate with users when they do download the app. On top of that, I do a lot of organic marketing. So rather than advertising it's things like keyword optimization and interacting with users on social interacting and engaging with users who are already using the app to make sure it's the best it can be for them i think that's a big there's like a combination of what uh the reason is why it's popular but in terms of if i thought that the tools would be popular i'd say i thought that they would really really resonate with people who experienced what i had i was quite confident about that However, I had no idea how many people were experiencing what I experienced because back in the day in, you know, 2016, 2017, this just wasn't something that was very talked about. And so I was feeling somewhat stigmatized for what I was experiencing. I was experiencing a bit of shame around it. And so to have so many other people say and open up and say, hey, I actually experienced this too, like you just did, that is now I'm getting more used to it, but it was so bizarre and different for me before. I didn't realize that I wasn't as alone as I felt. And so I guess that number isn't something I could have predicted, but I certainly felt like the users who did experience it would resonate with it. It's just a lot more users than I thought. You do certainly feel very alone when you're in the midst of a panic attack and you really feel like you can't think about anything else. One thing that I think, well, well I'm a kind of aficionado of tech and I like to try a lot of different apps. And maybe I'm a little biased in that because uh, my carry through with f completing an app and actually sticking with it is probably pretty low. I don't know if that that resonates with other listeners, too, because there's so, just so many options. It's very competitive space. What do you see as the trajectory of a typical user? Do they get treated? I know not everybody is treated f from anxiety, but there's a there's a lot of psychoeducation that takes place and maybe it plateaus to some point. What's the typical length of time that a user is using Rooted? It really depends on the type of user. So we're noticing two different types 
of personalities or segmentations. And one has to do with users who experience acute panic attacks. And so that's something that they might experience very frequently. And there'll be some of the power users and they are perhaps users who might find a way to graduate from Rooted in a sense when they no longer feel those sensations and they can kind of get back to their lives and get back to their regular schedules and and feel more empowered to do so, whether that's going back to school or work. And then on the flip side, we have users who experience general anxiety. And so that's typically less acute, but it, they'll actually keep the app for quite a long time because they know that like, okay, it's not debilitating in the sense that my life is on pause, but I should be working on my visualizations. I should be journaling. Like I know to practice my breathing. And so they might use it less frequently than the panic attack users, but for even longer. Gotcha. Maybe that's a good segue into telling the listeners about what they would see when they're using Rooted. There's this learning component, journaling, breathing, visualizing, and then the sleep element. I love that you included sleep as a separate function. That's like, I, I'm a huge fan of talking about that in terms of uh, patient improvement. What is your kind of favorite component or do you not like look at it like that? It's tough. I <laughs> previously, my favorite one was definitely the SOS button because it's what I used. And now thankfully my anxiety is so much better. I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do when I was really struggling. So I think that journaling is probably my favorite now because it's interactive. I love seeing all the Ron mascot images and the different Ron. emotions. And I just love the interactivity of those pages. And that's something I'm going to keep bringing into other pages in the app as well. I, maybe right. that's my favorite now. But it changes. It changes whenever there's a new feature. I fall in love with it and then get excited about it and then, you know, eventually move on to another feature. But it, to that. your comment on sleep so important. I think people who have anxious thoughts, not even necessarily anxiety or panic attack disorder, but just anxious thoughts and stress, like it can really affect your sleep first. And we're so much more grounded and fortified when we have a good night's sleep to deal with everything else. Absolutely. How do you hope to kind of improve that level of engagement? Do you incorporate any more sort of uh, personalized feedback or are you going to hope to incorporate AI? I know that's like the big topic these days, but what what do you see in the future, how you're going to improve the app? Yeah, I think that definitely some personalization in the app. There's already a little bit. The, the tool is very interactive depending on how you're feeling. You decide how you want to get started with Rooted. You decide how you want to walk through a panic attack. So that already is personalized in the sense because you get to choose your experience but definitely trying to get the users, trying to get to know them a little bit more. That's one of the priorities for the next quarter is really understanding when a user downloads Rooted, are they going to, like, what is their intent with it? Because I can see after the fact which tools were most popular and most used, but I'm curious how that aligns with what they were looking for when they first sign up for Rooted. And a lot of my focus is really on listening to users, understanding their feedback and working with it. That's so cool. That's going to be a, a great element that makes you, uh, you're already successful, but continue to be successful to hear, get a beat on what people are liking and what people need more of and how to continue, uh, continue to improve. I love that. I saw on your guys' website that in 2021, it's become scientifically validated. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. I, it kind of made me wonder, are you guys ever seeking to get FDA approval for it to be used as a digital therapeutic? And what's that conversation like? Not at the moment. I think because we're such a small team that I think just staying focused is really important. I've also heard, and I'd have to look into this more, but if you do have FDA approval, you can no longer be on the app stores. I don't know if you know any more information about that, but you know, the app stores is where we get most of our users. It's where our biggest level of distribution is. So that's something I'm always considering. And despite not having the FDA approval, you know, having the scientific validation has been very helpful. And, you know, some of our top referrers are clinicians, doctors, psychologists. So these relationships are super important. We want to continue working on that. We're going to do another study because I think it's important to continuously evaluate, you know, the, the app and the tool in that context. But uh, yeah, no FDA approval project for now. I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm trying to think of Reset O and Somris. Those are the two that come to mind that I know of, which are FDA approved digital therapeutics for addiction and sleep, respectively. And I don't know what the 
um, user's workflow is to, once I write the prescription, how they actually download the app or if it's just on a website or what have you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that might be information from last year too when I was looking into it. So I, I should definitely explore. Um, but I guess for now, we're just not focused on that. I hear that often with other startups that they just don't see that as their pathway. And I think it just really just depends on the company and mm -hmm. who their target audience is supposed to be, sounds like. Totally. Are there any specific features that you're working on right now that you can give us a little teaser about if you feel like disclosing? Yeah, so right now I'd love to incorporate daily notifications in the sense of like having it be a motivational phrase. I don't know if you've ever seen any of those, but they do really just bring a smile to my face personally. And it's also something that users have requested a lot. So that's something I'd love to incorporate in the very near future here. And then we've also had requests for a tool that can be a little distracting in the moment of a panic attack. And I just really want to be careful here because Rooted is more about education and managing a panic attacks. I don't want to throw in something just for the sake of it being distracting or like a game. So I want to make sure that it's something that can be useful for users, but also very aligned with Rooted's values. So that's something I'm working on right now as well. Right. I understand that where if you add a feature, you don't want it to become the new identity of the app itself, but you mm -hmm. trying to help satisfy a particular subset of people who are using the app, but it could maybe start to turn into something you weren't expecting it to be over time. Totally. Yeah. You mentioned that you had used a lot of your reference had been from other clinicians. What do you think that they're attracted to in, in terms of why they're referring a lot of patients to using it? Well, Rooted has a really high rating in the app stores. It's also something that ranks really high. So when you're actually looking for an app for panic attacks, it is one of the first that you'll see. And then also the feedback from users is that, you know, one use of the SOS tool and they are pretty convinced that it's the app for them. So thankfully other therapists, psychologists and clinicians have also played around with it and seen it. We get a lot of emails from them just saying, hey, this is great. I'm gonna recommend this to my patients. I think they are constantly looking for tools that can help, right? There's the importance of having symbiotic relationships with the relationships you already have with your doctors and stuff. And there are moments when those other important resources just aren't available. Like in the middle of the night, very common to have panic attacks in the middle of the night. It's actually what you shared as well. It's, you know, it's a time when everything else is quiet and, and you have more space with your thoughts and it can be overwhelming for some. And then your doctor isn't necessarily available in the middle of the night. And uh, it's so important to have a relationship with them. So Rooted is really meant to be like a symbiotic tool on top of what you already have with your therapists and doctors. Right. Cool. I recently just talked to one of the co-founders for Bruin Health, which is another startup. And so what they do is transfer research data into clinical applications and try to figure out how they can better perform patient assessments in in a more useful and relevant manner. And it kind of makes me wonder, does is that on your guys' radar where you could potentially get data and ap apply it to like a patient dashboard where the clinician can kind of see that? and use it in a therapeutic modality with the patient in the next fo subsequent follow-up and see frequency of panic attacks, time of day, intensity, how long they lasted, and things like that. Yeah, so right now our journal tool is a variation of that. The idea behind the journal tool is actually something that was inspired by conversations with therapists, and it's the idea that you might come into a session and say, well, last week was terrible, I had so many panic attacks, because it can really affect your self-esteem, and your, it can kind of blur, you know, the, the fact that you've also had some successes and wins that week. You know, having a panic attack is such a strong sensation and experience. So the idea was to kind of look at it and say, okay, well, how many panic attacks did you actually have? Okay, two, they were both on Tuesday. What else happens on Tuesdays? Well, Tuesday is the day that I talk to my dad. Okay, let's talk about your dad. You know, there's different ways to kind of get a bit of insight into why these things might be happening. And so the journal tool was inspired by that. However, all of that data is stored locally. So we don't actually see any of that. That's completely private for the user. And I think moving forward, if we were to have any tool, it would have to, of course, be you know, compliant with uh, privacy and, and data regulations, and also just be really carefully done so that the user gets the best experience and the clinician only sees what they need to see and so forth. Right. 
I'm glad you mentioned that because obviously that's uh, something that a lot of people talk about, both patients and clinicians. And also we talk about that at national conferences because you can't not talk about an app without talking about privacy and who owns the data, what are they going to do with it, are they going to sell it. So I'm glad you mentioned that, especially in the context of journaling, because that's obvi the obvious elephant in the room as to how they're going to be able to open up in the journal. Do I feel like this is something that's private to me where I can really tap into my underlying fears that happened that came up that day? Or is somebody on the back end kind of reading what I'm writing here? Yeah. So yeah, it's important. That, definitely. And it sounds like you've, you've um, gone a long way to building that trust with your user base. Yeah, the trust is really important as well. Yeah. Are there any misconceptions about the app itself that you see in terms of maybe people have criticized it that you want to potentially clear up? Not really. I've been fortunate that, you know, with Rooted's design and the way that users walk themselves through it, there's not a ton of feedback like that. Um, but there are sometimes users who maybe will jump into the SOS tool without reading the instructions. And that can sometimes be an issue because it is a new concept. It's best to always read instructions and check in and know that you understand what you're doing before you get started. Uh, but that's not really a misconception as much as just one of the customer service emails that we <laughs> deal with on a frequent basis because people are so eager to jump in. But I do think it's really good to read the lessons. It's That, that would be my top recommendation, actually, for users because it's easier to jump into one of the tools. But I think the foundation and the lessons is really, really important. Right. Education about panic and where it's coming from with the physical symptoms mean, I think, is part and parcel of treatment for that because it's just... So much we're reassuring that, you know, it's not life threatening mm -hmm. at the moment. It feels that way. Yeah. And just even understanding like how a tool works before you jump in will likely increase its effectiveness because you are already mentally prepared. Another thing that's not just for Rooted, but just I think apps in general and mental health apps is the idea of people saying, hey, we should be on our phones less. So how is this going to help? And I think there I would say, you know, the use of phones isn't decreasing and we're not actively trying to get it to increase either, but I think like at rooted, but if you're already on your phone, if you already have a habit of being on your phone that long, then why not replace some of the other things you're doing with something that could be beneficial to your mental health? Right. Yeah, true. Something that actually is validated for doing mindfulness and you'll actually come away from feeling more relaxed rather than being on social media and feel like you've been judged or you just wasted a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you see it fitting into the doctor patient or therapist patient relationship? Is it, I know you're, you mentioned trying to capture the individuals who have nowhere to go or maybe don't have access to care. So, but for the people do, who do have a therapist, can you talk about anecdotally how it's kind of augmented those relationships or provided additional data to them or how do you see that fitting in with them? Yeah, so I think it's important use case is being there 24 seven. And it's something that you might be able to manage without your therapist with the help of something like Rooted and then be able to talk about it with your therapist and say, hey, this is what happened. You know, it was the middle of the night, I pulled out Rooted, this is what worked for me, this is what didn't. And that can really provide the therapist a lot of great context. And that's based on feedback we have had from therapists. Right. I think one criticism that I always see, and I, I don't think I haven't seen this specifically towards Rooted, but just in terms of the apps in general, is that what if it doesn't provide good therapy and the patient ends up not going to see a, a therapist or they think that's therapy and it doesn't work for them. They just kind of get disappointed about therapy in general. But if it, it sounds like there's good delineation there or um, it helps that therapeutic relationship, then... I can see it working to everyone's advantage, really. Yeah, I think that, you know, in Rooted's case, we do not offer therapy through the app. So it's not a substitute for therapy. So that's quite important to point out. Uh, you mentioned earlier whether we were going to incorporate things like AI. That's quite popular right now is using AI as therapy. And I'm not at all against that. I just don't know it enough to feel confident about it enough. So that's not something that we're going to be doing. Uh, we it's really important to know exactly what we are sharing with users and to not have, you know, to kind of be in control of that because with, with other tools, you might have a suggested response. That's not necessarily what 
you would want it to be and it can get quite complicated so i guess the important parts here are you know we're not replacing therapy by any means we are like all of the content within the app has been reviewed we don't add anything outside of the visualizations and sleep stories and and different mindfulness exercises like all the content on the physiological sensations has been reviewed and stays that way you know it's uh, i think that's really really important and we also encourage users to see a therapist throughout the app can can you tell me what you mean by has been reviewed in, in what in what way by a clinical therapist gotcha gotcha yeah I, I just love your story. I love your intentions. I love who it's designed for. Obviously, it's been a big hit for understandable reasons. And it's, it seems like you have the right mindset um, of trying to help a lot of people and also um, work towards just having them be heard and improving customer satisfaction. Where do you see it going? Like the, the field is so competitive. Um, There's so many other big companies out there, how is Rooted going to continue to stay at the forefront of, of treatment for panicking and anxiety? I think by continuously listening to users and incorporating their feedback, Rooted has ranked number one for panic attacks for a couple of years now. And, you know, while you can't always rely on that to continue, I think it does show that these other apps come and then they go or other competitors come and then they go. And that's Kind of just the nature of the market and whatever does resonate with users will stay and that's sort of how i approach it it's not a very competitive mindset and i've had friends and other especially entrepreneurs and business people be like you should be more like competitive and out there but i think that at the end of the day i really want to make a product that resonates with users that benefits them and i think that that generates that that usage and being at the forefront of users mind organically sometimes but we'll continue to market. We'll continue to expand and into new geographies, et cetera, as well. So like you, as an entrepreneur, I I feel like it's kind of like our baby, you know, seeing it grow and the fact that you can make it very customizable to all the features that you want. It's almost like not work to me. It's like a, my little secret of like a hobby that pays the bills. That's fun. What what really gets you going? What's the most fulfilling aspect of Rooted for you? Definitely the user testimonials. And that's actually what these are behind me here. My partner created that or put it in a frame for me for those days where, you know, you're quite tired at the end of the day and you're thinking, oh man, why did I do this? Or why did I start doing this? And those are super, super motivating. So seeing real case confidence. scenarios, case situations that you've helped in you probably yeah. never got to meet them. No. You know, you don't see their face. It's just this text and it maybe it is hard to to keep going day in and day out, but getting that positive feedback out there is really helpful. Definitely. Mm -hmm. We get the negative. The negative stuff is more they're more vocal. <laughs> so yeah. we didn't need to balance it out yeah. with the people who benefit from it and maybe didn't leave a review or didn't give us any feedback. Definitely. The theme of this podcast being the future psychiatry podcast, you know, 20 years from now, I think digital psychiatry and digital therapeutics are here to stay. What do you think we need to do in our five year plan in order to get there? I think that what is most exciting right now is really the reduction of stigma around this. And I think what we saw during COVID was a lot of governments and large corporations finally talk about these subjects. And so while it didn't help directly for Rooted, I think a lot of people thought it did, but I think it really helped indirectly because now people are talking about this. It's more at the forefront of people's minds. People are less embarrassed to download a tool like Rooted to use it. And I think that that trend is really positive and I'm excited to see where that takes us because ultimately we went from generations where it wasn't okay to talk about it at all to generations where the, we didn't have the words for it to now it being talked about and being more inclusive and i think that's really cool and exciting right yeah and as we talk about it you know we start to understand that people might mean different things by the word anxiety or by panic and you can have all these different phenotypes for that one diagnosis quote unquote so to speak yeah maybe we don't have enough words yet to describe like maybe we need different words for different types of anxiety and Right. Yeah. Ron needs to come up with some some new um, coin new, new terminology on that, I think. That'd be fun. 
because I've seen people with anxiety where it could be, you know, heart racing, sweating, feeling keyed up, or it could be um, paralyzing and inhibiting where they're not doing anything. They're just um, kind of apathetic. And um, it could be like an irritable type of anxiety where they're anxious about something, but it's coming off as irritability or crankiness. Um, I think kids do that a lot when they have to do something that they uh, don't want to do. They're more cranky. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I love the idea that you have this great ability to educate the these individuals about these different diagnoses. It seems like a really cool cool way to reach a massive audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely hope to continue and do more of that. Well, Anya Wisotska, I appreciate you being on the show and taking time out of your very busy day to talk to us about Rooted and where it's come and the current features and where you hope it to go in the future. Thank you so much for being with us. Awesome. Thanks again. Thanks for the thoughtful questions. As a reminder, if you'd like to support the show, one way you can help us is by subscribing to the channel on YouTube and leave a comment if you'd like. It'd also mean the world to me if you can share it with your social media network. Maybe there's somebody out there who might be interested in the podcast. Hope to see you next week, next Monday. New episodes are released every Monday morning. Thanks a lot. Take care.